Welcome to Cardiac Delusions. Let's see our quote today. Amlodipine is contraindicated in LV systolic dysfunction. Is that true or false? Our colleague is seeing a patient at the OPC as he is a 47-year-old male who had an average blood pressure of 160 over 90. Despite taking Valsartan 160 mg once per day, Pisoprolol 10 mg once per day, and Hydrochlorocyzide 25 mg once per day. So he wants to add amlodipine as a calcium chart blocker to assist in blood pressure control, but he is concerned as the patient has a recent echo with an estimated ejection fraction of 35%. So he had LV systolic dysfunction because he had anterior STEMI six months ago and so he had persistent LV systolic dysfunction after the procedure. And another colleague in the clinic told him don't give calcium channel blockers. If patient with LV systolic dysfunction, they are absolutely contraindicated. So what shall our colleague do? Shall he give calcium channel blocker or avoid them totally? Let's revise calcium channel blockers briefly. We know that we have calcium channels on the cell membrane of cardiac muscle fibers and also the cells of SA node, AV node and conductive tissue and they are responsible for calcium influx into the cytoplasm to assist in depolarization of the SA node and AV node and also to assist in muscle contraction of the cardiac muscle fibers. So we have a family of medications called calcium channel blockers which come to block the calcium channels in order to inhibit transmembrane calcium influx. This action is produced in the vascular smooth muscles resulting in vasodilator effect and also on the myocardium resulting in negative enotropic effect as here it depresses the contractility of the myocardium plus conductive system resulting in negative chronotropic as it decreases the heart rate and negative dromotropic effect as it slows down the conduction velocity. We have two subtypes of calcium channel blockers. The dihydropyridine family, like the famous amlodipine plus nifedipine, philodipine, and lercanidipine, and the non DHP, like the famous verapamil and diltiazem. DHP acts mainly on the vascular smooth muscle cells more than the heart, resulting in predominantly vasodilator effect, whereas non DHP act predominantly on the heart, resulting in negative enotropic, chronotropic, and dromotropic effects rather than vasodilator effects. That's why the main indication of DHP calcium channel blockers is in hypertension, whereas non-DHP are used mainly in patients with tachyarrhythmias or patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and LVOT obstruction. So based on this information, which group is contraindicated in patients with LV systolic dysfunction like heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction or reduced ejection fraction? Of course, non-DHP, due to their negative enotropic, they are absolutely contraindicated in systolic dysfunction. And that's why in the 2016 EC guidelines of heart failure, there was a clear class 3 recommendation to avoid deltism or verapamil in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Still the same contraindication in 2021 guidelines, but the clear recommendation was in 2016 and which group is contraindicated in patients with bradyarrhythmias. Also, it is verapamil and diltiazem due to their negative chronotropic and dromotropic effects. So it is clear now that non-DHP are contraindicated in LV systolic dysfunction and bradyarrhythmias. What about DHP calcium channel blockers? Can we use them in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction or mid-range ejection fraction for a purpose of controlling blood pressure? In the 2018 AC guidelines for hypertension, there were clear recommendations regarding the therapeutic strategy in patients with hypertension and heart failure. And regarding the choice of medication, there was class 1 indication to use ACE inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker for blood pressure control in patients with heart failure, plus using a beta blocker and a diuretic or mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist because here this medication are not used only for blood pressure control but also for mortality benefit as a patient here has heart failure. And there was class 2b to use DHP calcium channel blockers if blood pressure control cannot be achieved despite using the previous medication. So DHP calcium channel blockers were not contraindicated in patients with hypertension and heart failure, but they are not the first choice as the previously mentioned medications. 
So if calcium channel blockers were one of the first medication to be chosen in any patient with hypertension without comorbidities, in patient with heart failure, the priority are for rest blockers, beta blockers, and diuretics, and if still not controlled, we can resort to calcium channel blockers. The 2021 AAC guidelines for heart failure tackle this issue. As they mentioned that uncontrolled hypertension is rare in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction if the patient is taking an optimized medical treatment at the recommended doses. However, sometimes the patient may need further antihypertensives if blood pressure is not controlled. And so, in absence of signs of fluid overloads, we can add amlodipine or philodipine as they have been shown to be safe in patients with heart failure and so they may be considered. What about the non-DHP calcium channel blockers and centrally acting antihypertensives? They are still contraindicated in these cases. And regarding alpha blockers, they have no effect on survival and so they are not indicated. But sometimes we can use them if the patient has concomitant prostatic hyperplasia, but to be withdrawn if the patient develops hypotension. So if you want to summarize the recommendations to choose antihypertensives in patients with heart failure, the so priority of course is for RAS blockers, beta blockers, and diuretics. And if the patient is still having uncontrolled blood pressure, at the time we can use DHP calcium channel blockers, especially amlodipine or philodipine. So if one of your colleagues told you that amlodipine and other DHP calcium channel blockers are contraindicated in LV systolic dysfunction, of course, you should tell him that only non-DHP calcium channel blockers are contraindicated in LV systolic dysfunction, and we can use DHPs in patients with heart failure with reduced or mid-range ejection fraction for blood pressure control, but after having an optimized medical treatment at target doses, and so they can be used, but they are not the first choice, they are the last resort. Thank you very much for watching this video and wait for the next cardiac delusion.